This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. Oh, you really gonna kick me to the curb? Hope you find the worst brother you deserve. Before Joyner Lucas would climb to the top of YouTube with his viral video, I'm Not Racist, clocking in 10 million views at the time of this recording. I see a black man aiming his gun, but I'd rather see a black man claiming his son. Before Joyner Lucas would land himself in the 2015 BET Hip Hop Awards cipher alongside Charles Hamilton, Jackie Spade, and Tink. Before Joyner Lucas would sign with Atlantic Records and release his commercial mixtape 508, 507, 2209, and find virality with his music video for Ross Capiccioni, a song based on true events. Put out the shot and all I heard was a screech and he shot my arm into pieces. I'm thinking I must be dreaming. Before Joyner would sit down with Busta Rhymes to get his honest reaction to that song and video. When Nas made the song like he was the gun, yeah. mm. that's the level of greatness. Yeah. He yeah. gave me power? Yeah. This is the level. That's that level of greatness. You were telling me about that record. That moment right there must have been a huge moment in Joyner's career because he first sharpened his skills as an MC, performing as a Busta Rhymes impersonator for his friends and family when he was just a kid. Starting out at the age of seven and recording by ten, Joyner Lucas's rise to fame has been a long time coming. Along the way, he found his gift for vivid storytelling, and Lucas captivated fans with his breakout viral video for his song Ross Capiccioni. I hope I'm saying that right. This was back in 2015. The track chronicled the real life near death gang shooting of a Detroit teen in verse 1 and then told the same story from the shooter's perspective in verse 2. Now this is a concept that he has perfected over the years, speaking from both perspectives on serious subject matters including suicide and I'm sorry and racism and I'm not racist and there's others, including opposites to track and half the n word. Now we'll get into all that later in this video as for now, Joyner Lucas has his eye on the crown and wants to be the man that makes people first fall in love with rap. What's going on guys, my name is Michael Bucredin, documenting the life and career of Joyner Lucas prior to fame, here for you on Before They Are Famous. Now you guys requested this video, in fact you guys went a little crazy with thousands of requests. So like always, I'm here getting her done. Let me know who you want me to document next in the comments down below. Now let's get into this bio. And I'm back, baby. Michael McCrudden, baby. <laughs> Joyner Lucas was born Gary Lucas on August 17, 1988 in Worcester, Massachusetts. Now that might sound like a familiar term, probably because you've seen this sauce before. And it's hard to pronounce. One just star shine. What? Yeah, one just a shine. One, one just a shishara. For whatever reason, Gary decided to abandon his birth name early on, and Joyner, he grew up biracial with his father, a soul musician, and his mother, well, I'm not entirely sure what her background is, but she did appear in the video for Ross Capiccioni. His mama told him, make sure you look out for my son, and before she could finish his sentence, I quickly just interjected and said, don't you even stress. In all the interviews online, the only mention I found of any siblings was Joyner mentioning a younger brother who would later deal with depression and suicidal thoughts, and this inspired him with his message in the song, I'm sorry. Joyner's love for music began when he was just a kid listening to the R&B that his family would play around the house, but when guests came to visit, Joyner transformed into an MC. He stated, my aunt used to pay me $1 to rap Busta Rhymes, Woo ha in the living room in front of her friends. I used to always hear music around the house and I knew I wanted to be involved when I heard it. Besides Busta, his other favorite artists growing up were Eminem, The Notorious B.I.G., Nas, Redman, Method Man, and more recent years, Kendrick Lamar. When he was seven years old, Joyner formed a group with his uncle, who was only two years his senior. By ten, the pair were recording demos and remixing songs by Diddy and Mace. The two would continue to collaborate over the years, with Joyner adopting the stage name G Storm, and his uncle would be known as Cyrus the Great. While attending South High Community School in Worcester, while Joyner was known around school for his rap skills. Him and his cousin decided to form the group The Film School Rejects alongside Sheen Phillips and DJ Prince. Together they put out a mixtape, Work Print, the greatest mixtape of all time, back in 2007. I hope you take your ass shopping like I did. I hope you come up out of pocket for that kid. The group began to receive recognition from mainstream rap blogs before Cyrus the Great and DJ Prince left to work with Sky Zoo, a Brooklyn rapper who was beginning to make a name for himself in the underground. Joyner was back on his own and he switched things up, taking on the moniker of Future Joyner and released his first mixtape, Listen to Me, in 2011. 
Early reviews were positive, but with rapper Future finding massive success the same year, well, Joyner Lucas decided to switch things up and go back to the name he was using as a kid. His next effort was the mixtape Low Frequency Oscillators released in 2013 and he continued to get his name out in the local area by winning several rap competitions. Now I don't know a ton about his personal life during these years, but I do know he left Massachusetts, opting to live in Montana and Florida to gain more perspective and some more life experiences. He also took to Facebook to make mention of an ex who once told him, get the hell out of my house, take your garbage little rap CDs too and good luck trying to make it. Now of course there were times where he was struggling and similar sentiments well they were shared on his track mansion and my manager told me, nigga, you gon' be rich. Nigga, you gon' be rich. That was last year. Now I'm living in the ghetto with the crackheads, working at McDonald's as a goddamn cashier. It wasn't until 2012 when Lucas really found his voice, recording at a non-profit youth center in his hometown, where they made him a studio where he could record in his spare time. He also got some online love from The Alchemist, who picked the track Joyner entered into an online contest. Maybe Chris Brown and Rihanna's umbrella. Be the bitch, wait a bit, make it all better. But during his formative years as a rapper, Joyner Joyner recalls getting into multiple disagreements with his father. He told Fader, For a long time I was being pulled in a bunch of different directions. I had my dad telling me, you need to make club music because club music is hot. Whatever wave was going on, that's the music he wanted me to create. We would argue and get into fights, this person's hot so you gotta be like them, he would say, and I never understood that. I was like, I don't wanna do that, I don't wanna be like them, I wanna be like me. It was in 2012 that Joyner decided he would use his music as a way to touch people and make them change their perspective by giving them an alternate point of view and perspective. Now I'm gonna go out on a limb here, but just imagine if every song spoke to you like Eminem Stan did the first time you heard it. I feel like that's what Joyner Lucas is up to. He spent the next two or three years working on his mixtape Along Came Joyner. During these years, he also came to know himself as an artist who had a huge passion for filmmaking and worked out a new style to come up with his songs telling Fader, I started focusing on my visuals, which I felt were very important. Once I figured that out, I started writing the videos before I would even write the record. I started doing everything backwards and it worked for me. Following the release of this mixtape, people's interest quickly started to gravitate towards the track Ross Cappuccioni. Other popular tracks include Happy Birthday and I'm Sorry, but the viral success of the Ross track and the video led Joyner to identify what his true calling was. Joyner's online rep was enough to earn him a TV spot on the 2015 BET Hip Hop Awards Cypher. He was initially only slotted for the internet cypher alongside the lesser known artists, but after showing what he was capable of, he was upgraded to the official cypher. This performance also got the attention of industry vet Shaw Money XL. On September 21st, 2016, Joyner signed to Atlantic Records and went on to release his debut commercial mixtape 508-507-2209, which is or was in fact his actual cell phone number. I wonder what happens when you call it. In fact, let's give it a try. Uh, 508. 508-507-2209. Long distance. To avoid this message, please dial one before a 10 digit long distance I, number. That's not on the album, so why would I do that? Okay. It's ringing. Yo, Joiner, this is Michael McCrudden from YouTube. I'm currently filming your Before They Were Famous video. Hope you like it. His mailbox is full, I think. It just went white. Eh. Well, I'm not the only person to give the guy a call. Leave me a brief message and I'll get back to you. Peace. Yo, what's good, Joiner? When speaking about Along Came Joyner, he told Hot New Hip Hop, this project took two years in the making. There's a lot of records that I scrapped, start over, scrapped, start over. There's records that I made from the very beginning two years ago that I still kept on the project now. So there's a lot of old mixed in with new, but it's all cohesive. Standout tracks include I'm Sorry, Ultrasound, Just Like You, and Winter Blues. With Joyner finally breaking into mainstream, he also welcomed the news that he was to become a father in 2016. Lucas would capture the world's attention following his release of I'm Not Racist in 2017, with everyone thinking for a minute that the white dude was actually named Joyner Lucas for the first half of the video. 
I heard Eminem's rap at the awards. Who's he fighting for? Y'all can take that motherfucker too. He ain't white no more. As for the rest of the story, well, that's where I'm gonna wrap this one up because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael Credit, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to give me a call over on Instagram. My phone's ringing. Hold on. This is, uh, let me know who you want me to talk about next, and I'll see you guys in another video. Join her? Yo, this is Patrick. Alongside Charles Hamilton, Jackie Spade, and Tink. Never heard of any of them. Oh, I got fucking bed bugs still. <laughs> I'm on. Someone's gonna cut it into the video. <laughs> oh, I am so itchy. Don't cut it in, Catball. That's fine, you can cut it. <laughs>